it's Mahi Chef and I'm back with another interview. Today I have Mr. Bradwater, the superintendent of Loveland City Schools here with me, as well as our new Loveland High School principal, Mr. David Spencer. Thank you. Thanks. I'm very happy you are here today. Thank you for taking your time. Absolutely. Thanks for asking us. So if you wouldn't mind uh, introducing yourselves to those who may not know you. Mr. Broadwater, I'll let you go first. Um, I am Mike Broadwater. I'm the superintendent of Loveland in the school district, and I am starting my third year here at Loveland. I am Dave Spencer. Um, this is my 25th year as a, as a high school administrator, my first year at Loveland. Okay, so we'll get into it. So, Mr. Spencer, yeah. uh, would you mind telling us a bit about your background, where you grew up, where you studied? Sure. Um, I grew up the first 30 years of my life in uh, north central Indiana, was a, was a Hoosier through and through. Um, went to a small college in north, uh, northeastern Indiana called Tri-State University, um, where I received my business education and physical education degree. Um, upon graduation, instead of going the traditional route and being a teacher, I had the opportunity to stay at the university and work in student life and in athletics. Um, where I continued to do that for a few years before I uh, went to the University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, where I became the athletic director, and then I also got my master's um, in business and administration, so I got my MBA um, while I was there. Um, did that for a few years and then had the opportunity to become a high school administrator, um, which brought me to, to Ohio in the Cincinnati area. Um, was an assistant principal and then later the principal at a, a small um, rural school in Highland County um, called White Oak High School, the bright local school district. Um, was there for um, five years uh, and then um, um, was fortunate enough to be part of the Forest Hill School District and become an administrator at Turpin High School. Uh, was there for 19 years as an assistant principal and, and the principal um, for a time for nine years. Um, and again, had a great opportunity um, to come to Loveland. Um, it was a time um, where I had three boys. They all uh, had graduated um, from Turpin High School, and it was a good time to, to transition and make a move, and, and what better place than Loveland? Uh, I can't imagine another uh, better opportunity for myself. So you weren't expecting to be a teacher? like a principal? Well, I originally planned on uh, being, a, being a teacher. Um, at that time, I never had any thoughts about being a principal. Um, but um, um, the opportunities I had in college and my undergraduate working with, with students um, and then was able to continue to work with young adults um, in, in higher education, I knew that I wanted that to be part of, of my career long term. Um, once um, I took my first administrative job, um, as an assistant principal, athletic director um, at that small rural school, um, again, I, I couldn't imagine anything else I wanted to do. Just because of, of the interactions I had with students, um, the the day to day impact you can have um, mm -hmm. on not not only them but but educators themselves. Um, and yeah, 20, 25 years later, I'm still doing it, and I love my job and, and love every day. Thank you. And uh, so some general questions is, what new changes will we be seeing in Loveland High School and other city schools as well? Uh, as far as Loveland High School, I, I can tell you right now my first year, I'm, I'm just learning the ropes. I'm lear learning the Loveland way, um, how things work, um, not only within the school, but the community as well. Um, and, and really seeing um, how things are done. I mean, Loveland's uh, a great high school. Um, they've been very successful in what they've done. Um, students um, graduate from Loveland and are prepared for their next step that they take. Um, so really I want to look and see what other kind of opportunities we can provide for kids while they're in high school, not only in the classroom but outside the classroom. Um, and, and again, try to find ways that we could even better prepare them for that next step after they leave. And Mr. Broadwater? Well, uh, this year, what we're going to look at is we were fortunate enough for the community to support us with the levy last year. And what we want to do is continue to build upon the conversations, the trust, and trying to be as transparent as possible with what we do. And so we're going to start listening uh, to the community this first year. It's kind of a three-year process, but the first year we're going to have 
uh, we haven't decided if we're going to call them town halls or what we're going to call them, but listening to what the community wants to see from their schools so that uh, we can kind of hone the strategic vision. We did a strategic vision a couple of years ago. Great way to meet the community, uh, but the community is going to see a lot of surveys coming out, uh, participate in the surveys so that we have an idea of where the community wants to go with our schools and uh, really dig into the education. I've, I've spent a lot of time talking about money my first couple of years here. I'd really like to talk about education <laughs> and what we want for kids, and that doesn't mean more money, that just means refining and reallocating and make sure we know what the community wants for our kids. And if you didn't know, uh, the uh, U.S. News and World Report came out and uh, Loveland High School finished in the top 2% of all high schools in the state of Ohio. And so when you talk about change, it's uh, there's not a whole lot to improve upon, but we want to listen to kids and see what is it they want to do also. So I've got superintendent advisor group that I put together for this year so I can get out and listen to kids, just see what's their passion. Because if kids are passionate about something, they're going to be successful. So let's, let's figure that out. Okay. And uh, with you saying that the levy has passed, uh, what is the discussion on busing? Well, uh, high school busing, if you remember, uh, we said in November if the levy had passed, we'd have the funds to bring back high school busing. It did not pass in November, so in May, we made sure to let the community know that we would uh, we would not have the funds for bus high school busing, even if it did pass, simply because you get new funds every January. So not passing in November pushed the funds for a year, uh, and so we couldn't do that. But the bigger issue with busing right now, like every district, really in the nation is finding bus drivers. We are worried about the delivery of bus service for our kids. Right now, we do not have enough subs and we are always accepting applications. But my concern is as we get into fall and winter, if we have some drivers that have to call out due to illness, we may have to double up some routes. And so that's the biggest concern is making sure we can still deliver the best service possible for our kids. Um, but we, we are short bus drivers. Okay. Uh, this is an opinion question, but what do you think is the biggest challenge facing education today? You want to field that one, Mr. Spencer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, th I think education, the way it is today, is constantly changing. I mean, what challenges we had five or ten years ago are much different than now. I mean, there's lots of things. Um, that we have to really look at and consider um, that goes well beyond just what's what's taught in the classroom and what that teacher's doing. I mean, we, we, we have to take serious looks at um, um, each student's mental health and, and where they're at and trying to make sure we're providing resources to support them. Um, we have to, again, try to do more things uh, to prepare our kids for college or the workforce um, um, or whatever they decide to do um, beyond because it's becoming more and more competitive when you look at, at mm -hmm. getting into college and the colleges that you want. So we want to make sure um, that our students have the best resume um, possible. Uh, other challenges, and this has been one for a while, is just social media. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, um, that's really sort of a lifeline for many of our students and I'm not sure if they know what they would do without their phone or, or social media. So constantly trying to educate um, our students and, and adults as well on um, how to use social media when it's appropriate um, and things like that. So mental health, social media, um, again, trying to do even more things than we've ever had to do to, to make sure our kids are prepared is, mm -hmm. is some of the challenges. If I were to p probably piggyback on that, I think the innovation of um, what does the school day look like, especially at your high school, middle school, where your kids are a little bit older. If you notice over COVID, there are a lot of people working from home and that's continued, right? And so how do you bring in the online education and the working from home and developing internships for our students yet make sure they have the seat time at the high school and at the middle school and obviously at the younger grades. And so how to morph into what the world is becoming while still have that traditional educational experience, I think is kind of tricky. Mm -hmm. I also think that you're seeing it in some districts that um, not, unlike Loveland, we have not struggled finding teachers, 
but if the world continues the way it is and people are allowed to work from home and uh, are able to do a lot of things from home, I think we're going to have to become creative on what education looks like so we continue to get the best and brightest educators in Loveland City Schools. And what that means, I don't know, but we do what in the, some of the talking that we're going to do with our, our community is what's innovation look like and what's that do to our schedule. In other words, uh, if we want to do a pathway for medical, does that mean we have a student who's a senior or junior that half their day is at the hospital and learning hands-on what that is and how do we make that happen, finding that kid's passion, but also making sure they, they're in the seat learning. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that's exciting though. I mean, that's fun to think about and how it's going to work, but it's also, it's also tough. Okay. Uh, uh, a question for Mr. Spencer is, uh, what do you think are the most important qualities of being a successful principal? Um, I, I think one thing is just the, the ability and willingness to listen. Um, not only listen to your staff and teachers on, mm -hmm. on what you can do, um, ideas they have that, that I, as a principal, can better support them. Um, and then our students, you know, um, their majority of their day are, is inside the walls of, of Loveland High School. And so um, during that time, we need to really listen to, on what's going to make their experience better, what their needs are. Um, some of the best ideas um, that come out of things that we can do come from students. Um, and so um, I need to be available and willing to listen to them um, and, and talk with them and work with them on, on a daily basis on, on what's going to make that experience um, for them over the four years that they're in high school better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that is a great quality to have as I know some teachers aren't willing to listen and are mostly focused on their way and don't understand their students' needs. So. And, and I truly believe a, a student um, only able to reach their potential in, in the classroom um, contingent on how um, good the relationship is with, they have with that teacher. So relationships, building relationships, teachers building relationships with students, me as a principal building relationships with teachers and students um, is, is just crucial. It really is. Yes. Um, and... So one more question I have is, what are your hopes and philosophies that you're going to be bringing to Loveland High School? Um, I'm all in. <laughs> and, and I believe it, whether um, you're an educator, an administrator, uh, a custodian, a cook, I think when you're working in school um, with students, around students, I mean, you've got to be all in. Um, I believe when we look at, at education and teachers um, and administrators, um, that um, being an educator, we get to do that. We don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. if, we, if, if we look at it as a job and not a profession, then we're not being the best that we can be. Um, Mr. Broadwater talked about um, Loveland's success in the rankings and how we're one of the top high schools in the, in the state, but we can't settle for that. If we, if we do and feel like we're good enough, then we're going to be complacent um, and then we're going to... Um, not do what we need to do to make it better. So we have a theme at Loveland this year that's, that for our students and staff is be better today. You know, look at how, what you did yesterday, pick a couple things and mm -hmm. find a way to be better than you, than you were then. And, and by doing that, um, that's going to allow you to reach your potential. And, and um, again, I can only see us improving upon um, what, what people view Loveland High School as. I just have one last question before this ends, and that is, what moment made you guys realize that you wanted to like work with kids, work with staff members? Like, what was that one moment where you realized? We'll jump in. Uh, so uh, when I graduated from The Ohio State University, I was 21, 22 years old. And what really made me want to, I taught high school math and physics, and computer science, but the subject area to me wasn't what drew me, it was sports. I wanted to coach. And uh, I think the beauty of coaching is, Mr. Spencer talked about building relationships. There's no stronger relationship uh, than there is between a player and a coach if you're doing it right, right? And you're going to get into some emotional times where, you know, you're down one and you need, need your player to do this and it becomes emotional, but it also lets you 
grow as a person to be a good educator, you have to know who you are before you can try to try to figure out kiddos. So for me, um, I think playing sports and, and being in it as a high school student and then wanting to continue that. And then once I started coaching and teaching math, uh, I really enjoyed, I just enjoyed every day the energy that kids bring to you. And sometimes in central office, I not sometimes, all the time, miss, miss the energy of the positivity of kids. Uh, and to me, kids are very easy to forgive because they're kids. And you just work with them. And I love Be Better Today. I, that's what it is. Let's just be better today and stay positive and continue to work hard. So the moment for me was really probably athletic driven. Uh, if you would have told me I was going to be a superintendent, I would have said, no way. Uh, I just want to coach hoops. And uh, so, But here we are because I think... Uh, everything that you learn, it's, it's amazing in life. Every step you take, you've learned something that you're going to apply later. And, and so uh, I feel like that's what's happened to me. But it really was probably athletics that got me into, because you get to know kids a little bit more. Um, for me, I don't know if I can zero it in on one, one incident or, or one thing. Um, to, for me, it was like a game of golf. You know, I'm a horrible golfer, but there's always that one shot, you know, that, gosh, that was pretty good, that that keeps me coming back to try it again. And so I you, think... You just, get that one shot? Well, I, for me, that one <laughs> okay. shot comes, but it's, it's probably nowhere near your, oh, your right, one right, shot, right, you know. But, uh, right. you know, just be making contact is, uh, yeah. is a great shot. Um, but, you know, I mean, I can just think over the years, there's, there's memories of... Of an interaction with a kid or a, a, a kid that just really had no hope of graduating, but he did, or um, a kid that was striving to, to, to be a doctor, you know, in the journey and be a part of that journey with them to, um, to, to, to prepare them um, for that. Um, so there's, there's several stories only that just keeps you, keeps you coming back. And, and just to reiterate what Mike said, it's the energy. I mean, every, every day is different. You know, I, I, I go in with a, an agenda of things I want to do, but um, it never gets done. But there's so many other things that happen. It's okay. You know, I'll find time to do that because of, of what goes on in my day and, and, mm -hmm. and those great things and those great moments that you have. Thank you so much. Yeah. This was amazing. Uh, I felt like I got to know you guys a bit more. And I want to thank you guys for coming in today, taking time out of your day to come in. And welcome to the community. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking your time. I appreciate it very yes. much.